when you're outside, you do whatever you want, when you want. I'm not gonna say that we're treated like an animal, but basically we're told when to eat, when we can come out, you know, when to shower. When I never thought I would be in a drumming class in jail, first of all. We're in the Montgomery County Correctional Facility. Today, I believe our count is 590 inmates. My name is David Clearwater. I'm a case manager for the Youthful Offender Unit at the Montgomery County Correctional Facility. Anyone that is 22 and under it comes to this unit and we provide different services for them like school, um, the Class Acts programs, which you're here for now. Class Acts Arts is a, a nonprofit organization based in Silver Spring. It's in its 20th year of providing culturally diverse and artistically diverse programs for children and families in the greater DC area. I'm Claire Schwadron, Director of Project Youth Art Reach of Class Acts Arts, and I facilitate arts programs for court-involved youth and women inside facilities and in probation programs around the state of Maryland. You know, the fact that we're able to do this, Montgomery County is probably the only jail I've been in that actually does something like this, a program like this. Sometimes the amount of time you're facing makes someone depressed. You know, the fact that we can go out there, play on the drums, it does give you an escape because right now for that one hour, I can play the drums, leave, you know, and I'm not think about whatever's going on. You know, not think about my case, not think, I'm solely concentrated on learning this. And the guys elect to come to the program. Usually their supervisor has to decide that they um, deserve to have the program because there are about 64 young men on the unit, so we can only take 15 at a time. There's almost always a wait list for them to participate. We provide the drums. The jail lets us store them, which we're very thankful for, because djembe drums are heavy and cumbersome to move around, but the sound is, is totally worth it. I'm going to ask Kwame to lead us to do the, remember the bass tone slap we have, he's new and some of you haven't done this in a while. So the, the djembe drum has three sounds, right, distinct, and we want to do that all together. So Kwame. Okay. Kofi Dennis and Kwame Ansa Brew, they've been coming here to Montgomery County Correctional Facility to offer workshops to the young men and occasionally the women and sometimes the crisis intervention unit uh, for about eight years now. The workshops are designed to run about eight to ten weeks, one time a week. We're going to try and alternate the hands, okay? So we're going to go together and then we're going to build the, the, the speed. And so we're, I'm going to say and and then we go. And. These guys, all of a sudden, were playing in the larger circle. Then they will tell you, they will remind you, tie the circle. Like I said, when we start out, we're further apart. And then as we progress during the session, we, we come into that enclosed circle, you know, to, you know, we're beating on drums back and forth. You know, it's really hand-eye coordination. A lot of us aren't coordinated. <laughs> so, <laughs> that right there helps us out on the song, you know, so it, it forces you to get along with another person against you. Like, even if you don't have a problem with that person at that time, you're gonna either put that aside because you're drumming in that class, you're a part of that class. Trying to keep up with the instructor is a challenge on the song. And sometimes we'll let them know that circle actually means unity. The fact that we are in a circle means that we are all in a community and we are together and we are united at that particular moment. So you cannot break the circle. You cannot break that unity. 
and and it's so much fun you know to just allow the structure of the circle to do its work and you just have to facilitate it and and it's beautiful they know that they are contributing and when they're doing it well and i feel good you know you see it in their faces you see it in their demeanor they are getting up to dance to it you know and it's just spontaneous this is wonderful while they're in there in that drumming class they're not in jail anymore they're no longer an inmate there's somebody who's important, they're proud of what they're doing, they're thinking about what they're doing, and they're engaged. So I think that kind of does sum up a lot of the programs here when they're, they're actually doing something that they would never do on the outside of these walls, or may never even have tried. They may have laughed at this if they saw a drumming circle in the park when they were outside. Like, that's stupid, why would, why would you want to do that? You know, and things like that. But now that they're engaged, I'm pretty sure that it makes them more interested in other things when they get out of here. Ninety percent of our inmates are released right back into our own community. So they'll be living next to me and you when we when they get out there. So some people will look at things, well, he's in jail. Why are you sending him to school? Why are you sending him to computer programs? Why are you sending him to the library? Why are you bringing arts in here for him to see? He's going to be right back there, and he could be one of our next-door neighbors. Do we want him to go right back to what he was doing, or do we want him to see a different path? The reason that this works so well at this facility is because the administration buys into what we do. When we approached the warden and the director of correction to discuss bringing in arts programs, initially they couldn't really see it. They didn't really see why they needed to add arts programs they were not familiar with that inside of correctional facilities. To the warden's credit and to Art Wallenstein's credit, they said you can come in, you can try. So we came in initially with performances, but we would not be able to do this effectively if it weren't for the administration supporting us and then that trickles down to all of their staff and supervisors. The arts are not frivolous. One, they've been around for, what, five, six, seven thousand years. I mean, artistic development, creations, have been with every single society on this planet as we have evolved, and they continue to evolve. So why should they not be part of a correctional environment, both from a safety and security perspective and in a therapeutic effort? There's plenty of uh, literature, all right, that the arts have um, intrinsic therapeutic value. They are used in dealing with the most serious mentally ill individuals. They're used in dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder from veterans coming back from combat situations. So why shouldn't they be used in a correctional environment? All right, they dig into the worth of the individual. They help the individual explore their inner self in areas they have never, never touched before. A lot of people would think, Yes, because we are here and we probably don't deserve what we have. But a lot of times, some people are actually here for troubles of another, you know, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. As corny as that sounds, but I mean, just because we're incarcerated doesn't mean we're literally bad people and we don't deserve a chance to learn something else or grow and, and, and be a part of something that's not a criminal environment. Um, it gives, you know, like I said, it gives you an option to learn something that you're not used to. You know, who's to say that when somebody leaves here who's a part of this program won't actually go to another art program and continue this because they liked it so much and enjoyed it. Bye.